our intention was to get a listing done um, and uh, the SPAC really offered us a path to get uh, listed directly. Uh, of course, we could have done a regular way IPO as well. That would have um, you know, required us to follow a slightly different process, uh, you know, filing with the SEC first and then going to the market uh, in terms of actually talking to investors. A SPAC actually allowed us to, the, to, to, do, to do the process the other way around, which is get the investors lined up first and then file with the SEC. And that's really the benefit of doing a SPAC, which is that um, we have a slightly different process. Uh, but from our standpoint, the end result, which is a listing eventually in the US market, is what we were looking for and that's really what we're achieving. Uh, so really that was the the end goal for us and that's uh, that's really where we are ending up with eventually. Well, some of your investors uh, who have been with you uh, through the course of your journey step out, would there be an exit there, uh, especially for names like Goldman Sachs? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, as part of this transaction, uh, we are raising $1.2 billion at an enterprise value of $8 billion. And of that, the gross proceeds to the company will be $700 million. And uh, there's a secondary component of close to half a billion dollars. Uh, so our existing investors will take a small amount of exit. But I think it's important to note that uh, our existing investors will continue to be 70% owners of Renew Power post the listing as well. So they will continue to have a very, very substantial stake in the company after the listing is done as well. So, hi, this is Christine. Uh, in the renewable energy space, you continue to be a leader, especially in the state of Gujarat. Uh, talk to us about your plans for expansion. Uh, where do you see the future? Is it going to be in wind or is it going to be solar or water? Yeah, look, that's a great question. I, I think the Indian market is poised for substantial growth over the next 10, 10 years and even beyond that. Uh, as you would be aware, the government of India has set a target of growing India's current 90,000 megawatts of installed renewable energy capacity up by five times to 450,000 megawatts by 2030. Uh, that's a very, that's going to be a remarkable growth. It's going to require us to add 360,000 megawatts of renewable capacity in the next 10 years, which is equal to India's entire in current installed capacity of power from all sources. So this is going to be a very, very sizable sector. It's going to grow very rapidly. Uh, and just to give you another context, we're going to add, just in renewable energy in India, the size of Japan's current installed power market altogether. So this is going to be an enormous building program. And uh, within that, of course, the question is, uh, we'll have to have all sources of growth. Uh, we'll have plain vanilla wind, we'll have plain vanilla solar. But increasingly, we'll also have combined hybrid beds, batteries coming in as well. Because as the percentage of renewables in the grid grows to higher than 10% where it is right now, uh, up to 35% by 2030, we will need to have intermittency management solutions. And so the combined bids of wind, solar, and hybrid, where we are able to provide more firm or quasi-firm power through renewable energy, those will actually become very critical in, in uh, helping us achieve these targets eventually.